was a story that when I was writing the legend of Lakshmi Prasad, halfway through I started feeling that uh, my editor will uh, murder me. She'll say it's not your Mrs. Funny Bones voice, which is apparently some I don't know. It's like I'm possessed by this ghost that goes on. But um, and I wanted to give it up, but I finished it and I sent it to her. And uh, as luck would have it, she said uh, it's perfect. And then the story that I actually sent her, which I thought was perfect, I said, I've nailed it. She said, you've nailed it so many times, it's full of holes. And she sent it back to me to redo. So that is uh, what happens when you write. You, you actually don't know what you end up with. The legend of Lakshmi Prasad is a story of a simple village girl who saves a community and the women in the community by a radical idea. We talk about the sanitary language, of course. Uh, there's so much conversation about it by virtue of its title. And also the journey. And when I got to know all about it from you, and uh, it was like, again, I said, there's a film there. Is there a film there? Perhaps. <laughs> all right, because again... It's a answer, perhaps. All right, perhaps so. I will do it. But what was your uh, experience of how you discovered this story? So, uh, The Sanitary Man is based on Muruganatha Varunachalam. Uh, I call him Muruga because my tongue trips over his name and also because he's a friend now. He is the inventor of the low-cost sanitary pad-making machine and he's, uh, he uh, works tirelessly to uh, dispel taboos about menstruation and, uh, and he's a very funny guy. He has these one-liners. He doesn't take himself very seriously or his work. Uh, in that manner where uh, there's a certain whimsy about him. And I discovered him, I was doing some research for a column on menstruation and I stumbled upon his story and immediately it gripped me. This was something that uh, needed, you know, the world needed to know. And if you think that this book is about feminists and women who are feminists, he is a bigger feminist than all of them put together. And. Um, and is it true that he actually didn't answer uh, the yes. emails from your husband's so office? So I, I began chasing him and chasing him, but he was very evasive. And then um, finally I got his number from one of my friends there who does TED Talks. And uh, I called him and first he told me, I actually don't talk to men, I only talk to women. And I was taken aback. I was like, why, what is that? So he said, no, by the time I explained to a man what I'm doing, half an hour has gone by. Right. And then I met him and uh, I, and he said, you know, a lot of people have been uh, writing to me. Abhay Diol has written to me, some Akshay Khanna has written to me. So I said, no, no, that's Akshay Kumar and he's my husband. So he was, you know, kind of, all right. And then um, finally, after lengthy interviews, he agreed to let me fictionalize the story.